that the mayor was color coordinated? I mean, talk about inspiration. She inspired. With the, with the background. That was a dope suit she had on. I mean, like. She's the mayor. She is the mayor. She's the mayor. Can she I ask you real quick before we get started and get into this? Can you tell me uh, the story behind those kicks? Because um, today is important. You had to wear something special. I, I did, and uh, thanks to uh, Undefeated and my friend Joseph, um, we'll Undefeated. just leave it at that. This is a collab, Nike collab. collab. Shout out to Nike. Shout out to Nike that's been leading this work for decades. Yes. Okay, the collab. Yeah, yeah collab. That's all I can say. Okay. I went with the Kobe's today. I saw. We're right near Kobe's spot, and I, I just want to say that this moment probably would have meant so much to him in this kind of day because watching what's happening with women's basketball oh, right now, and yes. I think Gigi would have been yes. headed probably to UConn right yes. now. I mean, and, and what so Don Stately uh, did with a, a, a brand new starting five had never played together to go undefeated back to back, you know, at the dance and to win in such uh, great fashion. It's just, it women, amazing, it, right? the future is women's sports. It really is. They outrated the men. I'm just gonna leave it there, okay? Okay, okay. The women's tournament outrated the men's tournament. Yeah. It's wild. All right, in your view, what was the importance and the legacy of the 84 Olympics? You know, I thought about that and had some notes that I was going to talk from, but just listening to you and the introduction of the mayor, um, you know, I think the legacy of the 1984 games was really about community. Uh, it was a city uh, that for the first time had to put on a privately financed games. Mm -hmm. No government backing. And, you know, LA is particularly developed to not have a center, right? You have a city council and a mayor, You've got the harbor, you've got um, DW, DWP, you've got the airport, so it's sort of diffuse power. And Mayor Tom Bradley, the great coalition builder that he was. Yes, he was. Uh, Peter Ubaroff, who was the CEO of those games, uh, and he talks with just such passion about how sports helped him become a successful executive, and that if it hadn't been for sports blazing a path to college for him, he would have never run the LA 84, the 1984 games. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was that spirit of collaboration and teamwork, the 33,500 volunteers that you mentioned wow. earlier, um, the corporations um, that joined you know, in that improbable thing to um, bring the world. And it was after 72, when the unfortunate um, assassination of 11 Israeli athletes and uh, coaches you know, 76 in Montreal was a financial disaster, and then you talked about the boycott of Russia in 1980. So that's coming into 1984 that people thought there is no way uh, Los Angeles is gonna be able to pull this off. Mm -hmm. And it was through community and collaboration, the way they lifted up artists, um, uh, f the food scene uh, emerged. And so as I talk about, particularly on a 40th anniversary, when I talk up to uh, folks who were here, volunteers, our board members, um, that is the spirit of the 1984 Olympic Games that I can touch and feel mm. um, that just um, helps to inspire the work that we've done for 40 years to you know, bring that community spirit to the work that we do every day. And how will that apply to the future? What everything that we saw in 84 and, and as you talk of bringing that community spirit each and every day, how do you go forward now? I mean, I think we've been going forward with that. I think the mor this morning's, um, did you guys like that uh, parade of grantees this morning? Yeah, yeah. Give it up to our grantees. Come on now, give it up to our grantees. I know it's early. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I think that, that is the spirit. Um, I like to say that the LA84 Foundation has been in service of um, you know, these organizations and individuals that show up every day in parts of the city that the glitz and glamor of Hollywood doesn't see. And they are doing um, the work of making sure that our, the kids in our community, the families in our communities have access and opportunity to sport plan movement, not to become professional Olympic athletes, but to use it as an opportunity to thrive, mm. to find their pathway in life. And we're simply using our platform to lift up and shine a light on the work that they do every day uh, to make our world better through sports. And that, at the end of the day is um, what Peter Ubaroff and the organizers of the 1984 Olympic Games were about. Um, if they had done nothing else, and this is in Peter Ubaroff's closing remarks at the closing ceremonies, if they had done nothing else but to use sport to make the world better for our kids, then in his mind, we would have been a failure. Mm -hmm. You know, just as we were watching the parade of 
honorees go off the stage, one of the young ladies stopped and she said, don't forget the indigenous games. And I was like, you're right. I look out and I see all the diversity in this crowd. Explain what play equity is and how it affects our community. That is play equity. Play equity is about fairness. Uh, it's about opportunity. It's about joy. Um, I mean, how many people felt joy when the band was coming in? I mean, you hear the music on the stage, right? Um, you know, I think for far too long um, that many of us see deficits in the communities that we serve, right? That they think there's something wrong with our kids. And there's a billboard in our parking lot at our campus, and it says, talent is universal, opportunity is not. And play equity is about, you can clap for that. <laughs> talent, is, talent is universal, opportunity is, is not. And it's our work um, about play equity is um, not just um, the direct service grants that we did to, that we've provided and invested in the organizations you saw today and across Southern California, um, but we fashion that as pulling kids out of the river, right? So providing support and resources and capacity building for these organizations and individuals doing amazing things in our community. Um, and when I uh, had the opportunity to lead the L84 Foundation in 1986, you know, I said we had, we had done that for 30 years. Um, 2,500 organizations, three million youth we've impacted. I think we've invested something at like $350 million. And I said, yet there are still millions of kids being left on the sidelines or out of the game completely. So I said we had to go upstream and ask the question, why are the kids in the river in the first place? And we used our data and our research to look at you know, systems, like our education system. And you know, PE wasn't a, a, a mandate. There was no mandate in time for PE, excuse me, um, recess. PE was an unfunded mandate. Most schools you mm. know, offer that one to two days a week. And but for these organizations um, providing after school sports, you know, good luck. And then when there's budget issues, sports is usually the first thing to get cut. And we know in this audience, because we're all in the work, that sports helps our physical, you know, just you're healthier. Obesity is 32% across the nation uh, for kids, young kids under 18. Um, our mental health crisis that we're in, we know that when we engage in sports, the endorphins, that joy that you get through, uh, helps you deal with behavior regulation, you know, your stress and your anxiety. Um, and certainly the inclusion and belonging that sports provides. And so we said sh all kids should have access to that. There should not be an inequity in something as basic and fundamental as sport play and movement. And so the Play Equity Fund um, that we created about five years ago is really focused on, I like to say, a one-two punch, um, direct service grants to continue to help the kids who are in the river, and then using our, the power of community, the power of coalitions. Many of you in this room, all of you in this room, are part of the Play Equity movement so that we can go upstream and address um, the storytelling and awareness that sport play and movement is essential to the well-being of our young people, um, to provide advocacy and system change. Um, I'm really proud of Fernando Ramirez on my team. Um, you know, we brought the coalition of our alliance and our young people to pass uh, a recess bill in the state of California that mandates recess for 30 minutes a day. And more importantly, it cannot be taken away as punishment. Because when kids, yes, right? I see my sister in the room who's a teacher was starting that clap, so thank you, Tisha. Thank you, sis. Um, because, you know, my son has ADHD. When he's starting to behave, misbehave in class, that's not because he doesn't want to pay attention. He needs to burn off that energy. Yeah. Um, and then the last is unlocking resources. I'm proud that this year, um, you know, we worked again with our community, with the co coalition, with the alliance, uh, to unlock $15 million of new county resources. Um, as a result of Measure J funding um, for sport-based youth development organizations. They wanted it to fo focus on diversion and intervention, and the powers that be didn't think that sport play and movement was a diversion tool. And so we um, you know, put a proposal into the county. Uh, many of you in this room showed up to put your dot on our proposal, and now there's $15 million a year for the next five years you know, going in to support the work that each and every one of you in this room do. So um, that's what play equity is to us. It's, it's, it's about fairness, um, it's about access, it's about opportunity, and it's about ensuring that every kid, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what they look like, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their income, that they have the opportunity to experience a transformational power sport play movement, full stop. Mm. I love that, I love that. How do you think, or what role will the upcoming Olympics play in advancing play equity in this city? 
Play LA. Um, hopefully you guys got to engage with Play LA today. Um, you know, Mayor Garcetti and uh, Casey Wasserman, who led our Olympic bid for, for 28, um, you know, looked at the, the legacy and the impact of the 1984 Olympic Games and the work that we do through the L84 Foundation and says, you know, how can we um, make an impact um, today, 10 years leading up to the Olympic Games? And we're able to negotiate an extraordinary, um, you know, investment in our city uh, recreation and parks department, 160 million over 10 years, um, that you heard the, the data and the statistics of how uh, young people throughout um, lower income communities within Southern California, or within Los Angeles City, um, are able to experience sports. And so those um, investments um, that they were able to bring to the city uh, levels the fees. Mm -hmm. So they pay a registration fee, but they can participate. You know, they're at a certain income, so there's equity built into yeah. Um, you know, that extraordinary investment. So they're already paying, um, paying it forward, as, if, as it were, through the Play LA program, and we couldn't be um, su more super proud of, of the work that Marin Casey has done, you know, to offer a, an opportunity of a legacy before the Olympic Games even comes back to mm. Los Angeles. Yeah, I, I just have to tell a quick story. You and I, we met. We did. And I came to you and I said, hey, there's an inner city soccer program that I have fallen in love with. Most of the kids can't afford to play club soccer in the city. So what happens is, is that some of the best players that we have in this city, they get locked out of club soccer. Hmm. So I talked to Renata, and she helped us with a grant to get these kids on the field and to play club soccer. That was three and a half, four years ago. Two years later, those same kids won the United States Youth Soccer Re Southwest Region <laughs> Championship. With, with many parents, with many parents, who were afraid to leave the state of California, who couldn't afford to even figure out how their kids were going to eat every day. And it changed the trajectory of their lives because now many of these kids are being recruited by high schools. Yeah. They're learning from the play. So once again, what you're saying, you put your money where your mouth Talent is. Talent is universal, opportunity is not. And I'll tell you, um, you know, I just, my mom came to my mind um, and my sister's here, here and my, my brother-in-law's here. And, you know, my mother was that person that um, on Thanksgiving, uh, if she saw somebody walking past our house and they didn't have anywhere to go or somebody in the grocery store, you know, we didn't know who was going to show up at Thanksgiving dinner mm -hmm. or Easter dinner um, or who was going to come and, you know, just be in our space. And, you know, I think that is the spirit of, of what I bring to this work is, you know, my staff is like always somebody's coming and, you know, hey, I need this or, hey, this is an opportunity. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm always the first person to say yes. I truly yeah. believe um, that philanthropy is about the love of humanity. Mm -hmm. And that if we love humanity and we see um, each other as part of this human condition, then we should all show up and do something to make the life of somebody that's in our space or we're proximate to better. And um, it is the spirit of my mom, Maureen Hutchins, that um, drives me to do this work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I, I owe you a picture from that day because the guy who's a coach, a young man who was like, he's 28, 29, and he sat on the side, he sat in the chair while the kids were getting their trophy, and he was crying. Mm. And I was like, I was like, are you all right? And he's like, I just never dreamed anything like this could happen. And so it's, that's the dream. And, and, you know, and it's, um, and I'm glad, and it's, the reason that the Play Equity Fund was established is the resource piece. Um, you know, we have the extraordinary um, gift of having 40% of the surplus from the uh, extraordinary um, surplus that was created, $235 million, was, was, was a surplus, not a budget savings. It's mm -hmm. the most financially successful Olympic Games in the history of the Olympic movement. And 40% came to start our foundation, but when I took over, I fashioned our resources as peanut butter on a really big piece of bread. <laughs> and we were, we, were spreading, we were spreading, and we still are, spreading our peanut butter really thin, and it's missing corners of the bread. And I said, we, the board, um, and my board members are here. I see Lisa, I see John, I see Win Wendy, I see um, Stephanie, I see Elizabeth, um, if I, I see Bob. Who else? I see, um, I see um, Gina Galasso. Who else do I see in there? If I miss you, I love you. Um, I appreciate your support and your commitment to this work. Um, you know, they took a, a gamble to say, let's form this new charitable arm that's about community. It's about collaboration. It's about being in service of our sport-based youth development ecosystem so that we can raise more money to help more kids. And if it wasn't for that 
uh, commitment and that support from the board to be able to do that, we wouldn't have been able to give a grant to Junior. And mm -hmm. these kids wouldn't be able to see the power of sport and their hard work to lead to a championship, to see a pathway to college. That ultimately is the legacy that endures and that we're gonna pay forward through the work of the Play Equity Fund for the next 40 years. I'm always inspired sitting around just listening to you. It is inspirational and appreciate which, which you do. Every good team needs a great point guard and that is what LA 84 has, one of the greatest point guards ever because she can distribute those dollars, right? right thank you, thank you. Renata, thank you oh, so thank much. You, Kevin. And, thank you. And we will see you again all yep. day long. We'll see you all day long. All right. But thank you all for right. being thank here. All right. All right, thank you guys.